Hell yeah. You know what we got here? Just a couple half milli boys. Sorry, I can't hear you. I'm listening to the sound of my own voice in these headphones. Wasn't Jay Z in the premiere episode in the pilot? I think he was listening to Jay Z. I'm listening to Jay Perna. Who's that? Got dirt on my shoulders, and I am indeed oh, brushing it off. So that might be Jay Z. Yeah, that might be. Ladies is pimps too. Okay, Gone. No, brush your shoulders off. Yeah, that's it's Jay Z. It's just it. It sounds terrible. But so it much drama in the LBC. It's kind of hard being Snoop D O Double Perna. Uh, I, okay, now he's just now he's making things up. That doesn't even make sense. Like, the shark is jumping the show. I'm going to I'm going to start the show now, buddy, all right? Can't hear you. Okay. Our show didn't start on YouTube. <laughs> what? There's there's nothing on my stream right now. I got zero. Weird. It's on mine. I don't I don't know what happened. Let me see Hold here. Oh, I'll go back here. It Dude, YouTube's been wonky this morning. It though. really has been bad. It really has. Yeah, it's public and everything. Weird. I don't. Yeah. No. Oh. Maybe now it just went. Did it go live? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe it just popped up. I don't. Yay. There we go. Yeah. Oh, my God. I don't know what happened. We've been live. We've been We've... live for two minutes. We've been live. Yeah. It wasn't me. It, I didn't touch anything. It literally was just like, okay, I guess now I'll go. But yeah, anyway. it's been We. I think they're rolling out changes today. YouTube has been rough. The Like, Sunday was rough streaming through it. Was it? But <clears throat> anyway. Oh, baby! We here. We steer. You in the right direction. Welcome to another edition of the Grassy Perna Show. I'm Tom Grassy. That's Brandon Perna. And this is a G, a P. Yes, and ladies and gentlemen, this morning, the one and the only Brandon Perna hit 500,000 subscribers. Wow. We did it. Did you see what they did to me in that live stream too, Tom? No. They dropped me back under 500. <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds about right. They that teased sounds... me. That sounds roughly accurate. I saw, I saw the numbers yeah. start going down. I'm like, oh, God, don't do this. I was like, yep. I'm going to get out of here. And yep. then they started going faster. And I just said, you know what? Do it. Just just hurt me. Hurt me it's one more time. a little bit time. longer. A few days more than he had with Denver. A few more. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is it? He, he few, actually outlasted like, his Denver tenure? Yeah, it was like a few days more, yeah. Wow. That's kind of right. crazy. There we go, baby. There we go. How you feeling, though, buddy? I mean, like, listen, we got a lot to talk about. Of course, Ooh. the trade deadline yesterday in which we're like, you know what? There's probably not going to be a lot of trades that are going to happen. But then all the trades happened. And then on top of that, you know, yeah. Josh McDaniels at 1 o'clock in the morning here on the East Coast got fired. Uh, on top of that, GM got fired. We found out the OC got fired. And, yeah, there's there's some crazy times. Oh, and you hit 500K. Yeah, so, I don't even true. know why I, I did. Mm -hmm. My trade deadline video is not doing like well. It's not doing well, but it's adding subs. Now in the video, I said we're getting close to 500K and maybe, maybe. that motivated people. But I was like, hey, wait, whoa, whoa. Yeah. I was expecting to be like a thousand away this morning and I was like 20 away. Yeah. So that was a nice surprise. Um, because I was preparing for just a day where all I do is work, which is still going to happen because like you said, 11 last night, I think Will texted me, Johnny called you. I think you and I were ready to detach and I got a text I was from watching Will. A documentary. Yeah. I got a text from Will and I'm like, what the hell? This must be important. Oh, 
shit, the Raiders have fired Josh McDaniels. So we're like, we better do a, a Josh McDaniels video. I still haven't done power rankings. I'm not even done writing that. So I'm like, I'm going to have to do two. And I did two videos yesterday I didn't want to do because <laughs> of the trade deadline. I know, I know you do a 50 million, but you just, uh, you like I it. Didn't, I didn't you say You like it. I didn't, I do, I love it. You like it. <laughs> there was actually a part of me because I saw that you were awake on Twitter that was like, I'm like half tend to be like, hey man, you want to do like a 1 a.m. GPS? Yeah. <laughs> There was a small part of me that was like, maybe, but I was maybe. like, I, I almost made a short from my bed, uh, but I was like, nah, it'll be weird. <laughs> and just yell at it. It was like, it's too late to get fired. Yeah. Uh, real quick, I hate the fact that they got rid of Rasul Douglas. He's a great leader and probably probably playing the best out of all of our secondary right now. I understand why they did it because he's going to be a huge cap hit next year. It sucks. But it really kind of just also commits like the Packers are bad and they're like we're rebuilding. They're trying to get value out of their players. Uh, so Buffalo, they got a real one. 49ers getting Chase Young for a comp third is an absolute joke. Uh, yeah. If he could stay healthy, then it's going to be a huge problem and make that defense look better. And it makes that secondary look better. And Josh Dobbs, they got him for nothing. So it's good for the Cardinals. It's good for the Vikings, even though nothing's good for the Vikings because Cousins is hurt. Did we actually predict Josh Dobbs yes. to the Cardinals? You, you were the ones who said that like Dobbs could go to uh, to Minnesota. Yep. See, I somebody said I said hey. it. Then I was like, I think I said it. And you then did. I couldn't find it. But I also predicted Colin Kaepernick, Cam Newton, and Cooper Rush. I couldn't find where I said Josh Dobbs. Uh, so I just used the, all the wrong ones. Yeah, but no, you did. You did. Yeah, I, I, I th like, you know, what was that, two days ago? Can't remember. Can't remember yeah, two days right, ago. I got you. I got you. <laughs> Well, yeah, we have a lot to talk about. Let's start with the breaking news here, of course, that Raiders you, fans Kevin. everywhere are in full celebration. And you know what? It's always, for me, it's kind of like a weird line, right? Because the last time I was, like, happy that somebody got fired was Dom Capers. Because, like, Dom Capers, Packers, old-time, like, defensive coordinator. Petten, I was pretty happy, too. But, like, Dom Capers, I was like, oh, my God, finally, Yes. And, like, over the years, I feel like there has been a little bit of a, hey, like, this is a person losing their job, right? Right. Like, shouldn't, like, celebrate too much. But then I'm like, nah, Josh McDaniels, like, kind of sucks. So, like, yeah. <laughs> this, I was like, yeah, I'm going to make a video about it. Because everything, like, for Raiders fans, too, they're seeing, like, this was not going to happen, right? Because the, the amount of money, they're still going to have to pay Poor. them for four additional years. Or, yeah. yeah. Why are coaches' contracts guaranteed? So, you know, like head coaching yeah. contracts. Like yeah. I get that there are a bunch of coordinators, positional coaches, and those guys, like you just said, when a coach gets fired, a lot of those people lose their jobs too. And those are the guys who it really sucks for. Um, I don't know how their contracts are structured. Hopefully it's guaranteed. I I don't know. Somebody yeah. let me know. But like the head Happy coach. Birthday, like there should be, um, the, it should be like the two year out window they put in for all the players. Sure. Like coaches don't get hurt. Like they're not in jeopardy of not being able to perform like a player is. And the fact that McDaniel's is going to continue to make money on this, unless of course he gets hired somewhere else. Like then there's offsetting shit. I don't yeah. even know how it works, but it's so stupid. Well, and you're right, McDaniel's sucks. Um, I heard Devin McCourty talking about how like players like him, like he always really enjoyed him as a person. He wasn't in the coaching room with him, but like he liked hanging out with him. So I don't know what the actual feeling is with McDaniels and the players. But we we know he ruined the Broncos, traded away a quarterback, just ditched out on the, the Colts. Yep. Goes to the Raiders, does the same thing, gets rid of a quarterback. And don't get me wrong, Derek Carr's not perfect. But no. we know one thing for certain right now. He's better than Jimmy G. <laughs> he's better than Garoppolo. True story. Um, and Urban Myers, the point I was getting to, that was the last person I was like, I am glad that man has yes. been fired because yeah. he does not seem in any way, shape, or form to showcase the traits that makes me believe he should have that job. He right. just seemed like a, a jerk. Well, it was that first of all, Steven. Thank you for the fake. Bam. Patricia. Okay, huh? Yeah, that was another guy nobody liked. 
oh so i mentioned that in the reaction video because the lions were the ones who beat the raiders and ultimately got fired and like they were yeah. stuck under patricia for so long who tried to turn him into the patriots and it was like a joke so like uh, at some point it's like also that accountability like nathaniel hackett right yeah i didn't it's feel like, good about that yeah you don't feel good about it because you're also like excited seems like a cool dude i still remember the beginning of the season you're just like look how cool this guy is he's talking about his records and his garage and yeah, stuff like that he's a like, nice guy he's a nice guy and like you know so like that you're just like you know what it's just like unfortunate it maybe i'm projecting a little bit here i don't think i am but during 30 and 30 there was a comment that was made like when we were just like kind of going around the facility and it was kind of like talking about the difference between their previous head coach and their current head coach and kind of saying, you know, ever since coach McDaniels has gotten here, things are just done a little differently in terms of like communication, mm -hmm. more like kept internal, but it was said with like that hesitation. I was like, okay, yeah. All right. So it just seemed that, mcdaniels like first of all wasn't a popular hire amongst the fan base what the raiders have done over the past few years hasn't been popular amongst the fan base including moving their team out of where their fan base is and then on top of that you don't have a franchise guy right it's max crosby it's Devonte adams who is obviously very upset and you know josh jacobs if you decide to resign him and it seems like he burned so many bridges with their franchise players and like also shipped out guys too that it's just no, there's been no positives that have come yeah. out since McDaniels has gotten into Vegas. There's no positives. And I know Raiders fans are happy today, and they should be. There's a little bit of hope now moving forward. But I don't, I am not optimistic that things will get rectified because you cannot trust Mark Davis at this point, right? That's, yeah. Like that's the problem in that it wasn't Mark Davis's fault that John Gruden had to resign right? right they gave him a, a just a dumb contract the 10-year 100 million dollar contract for gruden who had yeah. been out of coaching that was stupid um but like gruden wasn't a, a terrible head coach and we know mark davis loved him and then the whole email thing came out he had to resign so a lot of times when a when a, a gm or team owners fires a head coach midseason, you have an interim head coach. And part of the reason you fire midseason is, in my opinion, maybe we have somebody on the roster. Sure. We can evaluate to see if they should be the next head coach. Teams don't really do that. They don't. But the Raiders fell into that man in Rich Bisaccia. Yes. What he steered that team through, what Derek Carr helped lead that team through that season, in addition to Gruden, was the reason you go, you know what? Maybe I don't need to go spend money on a guy like McDaniels, and we we rock with Basaccia for another year. Who the players loved. Yes. Like, universal. The guy's writing letters to every – like, loved him. And they're like, yeah, no, get out. And he's – Basaccia was the weird combo of players loved him, but he was also a hard ass. Yeah. And that's, like, a nice combo. Um, yeah. With with a it's with a Italian coach baby. because like sometimes the, the the label players coach gets slapped on a guy and it means like sure. he lets players be undisciplined right and then there are results on the field that are like oh this team sure they all like the coach but they you know they're jumping off sides thirty times a game or or, or, or some shit and Basachi had that weird thing where like players like he's kind of a dick but like he's got our back and we respect him yeah. And yeah, it was it was a it was a bizarre move and it, it backfired. I am just happy that the team finally listened to the real general manager, the real team owner, Devontae Adams. <laughs> I thought that he should have been the new interim head coach. Yeah, he should have or, been. Or at least offensive coordinator. By the yeah. way, Steven, I appreciate you. You like football? Yeah, I do. We do too. Good clip. Yeah, That's baby. Good clip. Um, in this, I mean, this started Monday night, as you alluded to earlier. The the Lions embarrassed the Raiders on Monday Night Football, mm -hmm. and the real like story from that game was free Devonte, right? Like everybody was yes. like, Devonte's getting open. Jimmy G can't get the ball to him. Jimmy G was under pressure seventy percent of the time in that game. So I know, like, that it looked like half. Garoppolo's Oof. worst game. 
but uh, the Lions got to him. He's coming off a back injury, which can't be great for his accuracy. Uh, I don't think Jimmy is as bad as he looked in that game, but it was a, you had a microscope on you because it was prime time. Yep. Had that game happened Sunday morning or something, it wouldn't have been as big of a deal. But just seeing like Devonte Adams open, not getting the ball to him, overthrown, and then him losing his his cool on the sideline a bit. People are like free Devonte, free Devonte, and I love Devonte Adams. I think he's one of the I don't know. He's like one of the realest guys in the NFL. He is, yeah. And he's nice. He's courteous. But I said no. You made your bed, Devonte. You stay with the Raiders. You picked that dumpster fire. And now I have some hope for him there. I have some hope for Devontae. No. Well, because now you also... So here's the issue too, right? Uh, which one about the Cardinals? Which which one? I mean, I've been telling people for years. Like, it's always fun. Like, listen, when Boo, Roger Goodell, like the whole nine yards, right? Oh, yeah, like, that's always a fun yeah. time. Mm. But bro, it's the owners. Like, the owners have all the power in the NFL. Like, yeah. all of it. They throw out Roger Goodell. And the owners are like, yeah, sure, we'll rock with Goodell. Because he gets to be the shield that you throw them in front of and you go have a nice day. But I wonder, so I wonder though, my bigger question is now going forward is for guys like Eberflus and guys like Brandon Staley and guys like Ron Rivera, because we're going to talk about the trade deadline, the commanders, they sold, they were selling yesterday and they sold some big players as well. I also love how, I'm sorry, this was just, I know that the Chase Young thing to the 49ers for a third is ridiculous, but the fact that the Bears got Montez Sweat and had to give up a second yeah, also just funny. gives me like a little giggle. Like I came out after that. It just like a little bit. I was like, all right, that's just objectively funny. But Bisaccia, like, I don't know if he's going to come. He's not doing really well. Like our special teams are garbage this year. Like our special teams is not doing well. Um, it was nice last year, but it's it's not doing better. I don't even know if that that bridge might be too burned because, like, again, it's your ownership that's like, we're not rocking with Passaccia. Yeah, I don't think he's going back. Um, Right? He's like, you guys could have had me. And, I yeah, if I'm him, I'm not good. Like, it is the only way the Raiders' job becomes, like, um, truly desirable is if they finish in a spot by the end of the season where they can draft a quarterback yeah yeah well i think that's gonna be the, yes. of course i think the that's gonna be bag. the selling point and i think what's really interesting is if the raiders knew this was going because i want to know like when was this decision made because again like the news is dropping one tech so 10 p.m yeah. over uh in vegas we're like that's late it's middle of the night like it's yeah late. you rarely see that when was this decision made because do you think if this was thought about like, you know, as soon as Monday's over, like Monday night football, they're like, you know what? We're done. Like have a nice day. Do they then make moves at the trade deadline and try to like offload some players to get maximum value? But again, which ones are you getting rid of? Like Hunter Renfro? Like, I don't know why he was still there. Cause it's just like, Hey, like send him to the Panthers for like a fifth and have a nice day. But there was also like Devante who's clearly unhappy but it's Devontae also want to make, he wants to make the team better, right? Yeah. I feel like that was not really the story that was coming out. It was like, Devontae just wants out of Vegas. No, I'm it, sure he's really, really pissed, but no, he legit wants to make his team better. Yeah, he, like, because he grew up as a Raiders fan. So I respect yes. that he wants to be there and that he didn't, right, and like I said, Devontae's smart because I asked him about it after the game. He's like, I'm not going to answer that because whatever I say is going to get turned into like a story. Yep. And uh he's like i don't want to do that right now and i really really respect that answer from Devonte adams yeah and he still is one of the best receivers in the league he just doesn't have somebody to get him the ball and you're seeing tyree kill just kill it with the dolphins with tua a, a quarterback people weren't sure about before um tyree kill got there and i feel like Devonte is close to that level where he is such a good receiver that he can make that type of impact. You just yes. got to get him the football. And if you have him, if you have Max Crosby, you have a couple key pieces that you should be able to win games with. And uh, now they're going to be in a coaching search and they got to find a quarterback. And the uh, who did they name as the interim? Their linebackers coach? Yeah. Uh, 
If he comes in and it's just like we're rock, we're let's just roll with Aiden O'Connell for the rest of the season. Love it. Just do it. Yeah, See what you now got with it that looks guy. like he might start. And like, you know what though? This that shows they're kind of listening to fans at least because they're like, <laughs> okay, you know what? Let's put him out there because Aiden O'Connell. People have been already calling for Aiden O'Connell, and especially after Monday night. They're like, let's see what they got because he looked good in the preseason. And even if he goes out there and sucks, at least you then can check off that box and be like, you know yeah. what? All right, look, we're trying. And I feel like even though it's week nine, you still have a whole half of a season to go and it's probably not going to go well for the Raiders. At least like there's that light of, hey, maybe we'll get our franchise guy. You actually trust maybe the people in the building will develop that guy. It's not Josh McDaniels. But as you mentioned before about ownership, who who's giving out these contracts? It's ownership. Yeah. And I feel like this is also the time where you just like remind people that those salaries for coaches, those contracts, they don't come out of the salary cap. And yeah. so that comes down to ownership. So like Perna always jokes about Walmart, right? It's just like, we can throw all the money at everybody when it comes to like coaching and hiring yeah. staffs and all that great stuff, because it has nothing to do with the cap. The Raiders, right? They're the most, I think it's a cash broke, right? Like teams in the league. So it's like, okay, well, they're going to face some challenges, but they just gave out another massive contract. They're going to be paying for Josh McDaniels for the next four years, unless he gets picked up by someone else. And it's like, dude, you just got to also trust the people in the building, which is what I talked about with the Bears, because they're in the same exact place. The people who are hiring these GMs and the head coaches they're in the building and they're now coordinators or they're consultants and things like that. And it hasn't worked out. And that's really tough because if you have an ownership that you don't really trust, there's almost no way to get rid of them. Yeah. And, and the, the bears are a good example there because of the, the chase young and Montez sweat trades. Um, you've got to have a general manager who isn't scared to lose mm. the deal. I think. And the Bears seem a little bit too willing to say yes. Uh, the Chase Claypool one, right, last year, gave up way too high of a pick for Chase Claypool in a season where you weren't going to save your season. Sure. And I'm like, okay, yeah, we'll give the second for Montez Sweat. Yeah. And then you got the 49ers who are like, okay, uh, Washington. We know you got a second for Montez Sweat, but we're only going to give you a third for Chase Young. Yeah. Like, they're just better at negotiating those de those deals. And I would argue, like, Chase Young has more of an upside still than Montez Sweat. I agree. Although Montez Sweat has been a better player, a more consistent player, consistent. a healthier player, a more yeah. important player to Washington. Um, So it's... You, you got to trust the ownership to put the right people there. And John Lynch, Kyle Shanahan extended this season because ownership's like, yeah, you guys are doing it right. Uh, sure. we, they haven't won a Super Bowl, but obviously they've gotten to the Super Bowl. They were close last year. They're making it work with Brock Purdy. The Bears, I have questions about. Washington, I don't, I don't know. Like, I get that they're trying to build for the future, but they let two edge rushers go. Well, and Chase yeah. Claypool was starting to play as as well as he was as a rookie, if not Chase, better this Chase year. Young. Chase Sorry, Young. Sorry, Chase Young. Chase <laughs> do you think the do you think the Bears were like we like both Chase Young and Montez Sweat, but we we're done with we chases. can't do a chase again. No more chase. No, it's too much. It's too much. Elliot, by the way, Betty, Betty, get it. Woo! You're free. And listen, it's magic. Is magic. Get your hand off my penis! This is the bike who got me on the penis, people. Oh. Oh. Appreciate you, Elliot. Appreciate you. Yeah, but, I do want to talk about trades because let's kind of dive into that. Can we start with the Bears? Yeah. Because them getting Montez Sweat. So you mentioned both guys. The commander selling, obviously, Sweat and then Young. Both guys were in line to get a new contract. Sweat has been good, more consistent, right? And Chase Young, I think, has a higher upside, but the health has been an issue for him, right. right? Staying on the field. So for the Bears, I think this makes a lot of sense because yeah. you get that consistent guy. I know they were talking about both. And you're giving up a second, which is basically going to be like a first, right? Like right at the end. Yeah. But 
this helps the Bears in the future because they have no pass rush right now. Yes. So it's like, okay, they kind of sold off their defense. They're going to have like $110 million in cap space next season. So they're like, all right, let's rock with this. Let's get a guy that we can hopefully build around so we can start building this defense back up into which, you know, that's kind of our bread and butter anyway. Yeah. And they they had the money to pay to pay sweat. So that part makes sense. The only part that doesn't make sense, and it only didn't make sense until the 49ers got young for the third, is giving up that that second. Correct. Uh, because it is going to be at the top of the second round. And we just watched the Steelers with their pick take uh Joey Porter. Um, you can get great players right there. Yeah. But they do have two first rounders. And assuming they don't need a quarterback, they can turn one of those first rounders into more picks. And there might be a team willing to give them a haul to get to what spot they're in. So I'm going to hold judgment there. I like, the, I like sweat. Like, yeah, I think I like sweat more than chase young in terms of the guy they're getting right now. I, um, yes, that consistency and like health factor is a big yeah. deal. Again, upside, I like, like Young going on to a 49ers defense. That's going to be rough. Like, yeah, that's going to be a time. That's going to be a time. So I think ultimately the, the Bears will be happy with this. They got the money to afford it. Um, and I think they'll, they'll find a way to recoup a, a draft pick somewhere. Yeah. Um, the yeah. Uh, I don't love the moves for the commanders. Uh, one thing I heard yesterday was that uh per my sources was that this was a, a an ownership decision um for the the commanders and we think ron rivera's on the hot seat right uh i i so would be shocked if he's there next season the what i don't like is ownership making these two decisions before they bring in their their next coaching uh regime because if you were a coach going to Washington, I get not having one of those guys, but being like, you know what? I really think uh, Chase Young is an important piece to our defense. I think we should, you know, uh, extend him or or whatever, keep him around versus now whoever comes in is like, well, you got rid of two really good edge rushers. We know sure. how important that is to a defense's success. And it's not it's not really easy to find edge rushers uh, in the draft. So apparently this draft class is not great for edge rushers. And that's, yeah, that's what we've heard. And again, you never know, but so if, if I'm Washington, if I'm a Washington fan, I'm wishing we would have kept one of the guys, but uh, well, Elliot, well, thank you, Elliot. I got you. I got you. I got you. Buckle up. We're going to have some fun. Thank you, Elliot. Thank you. So, we'll, I mean, we'll, so ultimately, we'll see what happens. But so, but here's my logic with that. It's two edge rushers, right? One, they're picking top five overall. And Sweat was a first rounder, I think, right? Or a second rounder? He was like one of the, he was a day one or a yeah. day two pick. Chase was the second overall pick. Yes. The commanders know that. Right, you would think they know that. Like, it's not easy to replace the edge rushers. Like, they're not. I don't know. Josh Harris is a basketball so guy, right? So, do you think it's Magic like Johnson's hey, like, a basketball guy, right? Yeah, right. Like, we evaluated it, and it's like, no, like it's just not. Like, these guys are not worth. Like, they're worth a second and a third, and that's it. I thought they could have gotten more for Chase Young, and like maybe yeah. it was just like people didn't like teams didn't want him. But yeah, and was, maybe like, it's one of those things where it's like, where do you want to go, Chase? Maybe they're willing to take less to send him to a place where he can succeed. But like, I'm wondering now, is there going to be a pivot? Because Washington, like the highlight of their team has been the defense. Like yeah. that's like kind of what got the them into the playoffs. Front. Yeah, those years ago. And now like, I know that they extended some guys too, right? Like they brought pain and all that great stuff. Like they definitely, they brought back the guys they wanted to, but now it might be like, hey, you know, with this second and third pick, maybe we build up the offense a little bit more, like offensive line, because maybe we can kind of transition a little bit. If Sam Howell's our guy, which it like I, I would feel some confidence in Sam Howell, maybe moving forward, it's like now we're going to work on protecting him and then we'll kind of work on rebuilding yeah. the defense. Maybe. Look, if they find the next great edge rusher, <clears throat> we won't talk about this, but um, right now, teams that have yet to really figure it out on offense 
uh, they're being led by defenses where the star of that defense is a TJ Watt, a Miles Garrett. Nick Bosa made all the money this offseason. Yep. Um, and it's John Gary. We, we, we're like, we're crediting the Niners for getting Chase Young. And uh, yeah. thank you, Adam. Thank you, Adam Barry. But the, the 49ers defensive front is, has not been as dominant as it should be this no. season, especially no. through these like losing uh, the three yes. losses. So that's why the 49ers went out and got him. It's like this unit's, we need help here. So let's just go get another guy and maybe yeah. that puts him back over the top. It feels like an Eagles move to me, what the 49ers yeah. just did. And it's funny that those two teams could very well be, you know, meeting deep in the playoffs. I got you. There's some amazing guys on that staff. Coach Grossi, guy who puts all this time in. <laughs> Forgot about I, that. I, I, dude, I, I just saw a Russell Wilson clip. I'm like, I don't even know which one this is. Oh, but you're welcome, Russell that. Wilson. You're welcome. Um, yes. So I've been talking about this too because that secondary has never been the best part about that 49ers defense. It looks really bad this year, but it looks worse because the pass rush isn't getting home. Now you bring in a Chase Young, just someone else for that offensive line on the opposing side to worry about. That is going to make that secondary look better if they can get after the quarterback more consistently. So it's a win-win. You give up a comp third, which is a joke, which, by the way, this is hysterical. They got Trent Williams from the Commanders, and now they got Chase Young. Yeah. If they turn Chase Young into the superstar. And for them, it's low risk. It's a third-round pick, so who cares? Like, at the end of the day, like, who cares? Maybe that's just bias because the Packers don't know how to use their third-round picks, even though, yes, I know we just got one for Rasul Douglas. But... If Chase Young doesn't work out, they don't re-sign him. Even if he works out and he prices himself out, he is going to be on a playoff Super Bowl contending team most likely. Yeah. So they can utilize, if he just goes off for the rest of this half of the season, does well in the playoffs, they get him win a Super Bowl. Then they go, all right, Chase Young, go get your money. We're cool. We got a Super Bowl. Yeah. So it like, feels like they're no renting him. It really does. Yeah. Like then you could get a ton of money. Like, you don't necessarily have to stay on the 49ers, but now you have a spotlight on you that you didn't have in Washington. Yeah. And you're on a contending team, and you're rocking. Montez Sweat, you're on the Bears. I'm sorry. But <laughs> like that, it, that's why it's it's a win-win-win for the 49ers and for Chase Young, because if he works out, great. If he doesn't, okay, that works too. Yeah, they want to start Aiden. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Okay. Already so. making better decisions. And that's not, it's not even, it's not a knock to Jimmy G. I just think like, you know what you have with Jimmy G. I think his yeah. back injury uh, effed him up, and you were competing. He gonna start, and now you're not Raiders. You know the the tragedy here is my fucking metric <laughs> to measure teams is now gone. I said if you lose oh, to Josh God, McDaniels and the Raiders, the Raiders, you're bad. If you beat him, you're not bad. I'm not saying you're good. Now we gotta. I gotta rethink how ooh, I. Uh, I wonder. Ooh, that's interesting. Depending on their draft pick, if Cousins goes to the Raiders, no. that is interesting. See, I mean, here's the thing, agent. though. Like, I think it's a transition the, thing again. But you know, you gotta. The Raiders. The best thing that they can hope for is that they get a low draft pick and they're able to draft like their franchise QB. So twenty six. Yeah, you. I think what Devontae's choice to go to the raiders it's a warning to other players man like if Devonte can't look good there um who the hell can if i'm mm -hmm. kirk cousins i'm not going to an organization late in my career that i don't trust i think kirk cousins will be back with minnesota um i know everybody thought this was his last year there but I feel like he played himself into the job. And more importantly, I think we'll see how important Kirk Cousins is to the Vikings for the rest of this season. I'm rooting for uh, Aaron Hall and uh, Jaron Hall. Jaren. And I'm rooting for Josh Dobbs, but they're not going to be, be the same. It's <laughs> You're going to, it's going to hurt. Now Dobbs, it's a win, 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 win for Dobbs too. And the Cardinals the Cardinals like got Dobbs for nothing. He, he be, they beat the Cowboys. So that's always cool. Right. And they ship them off and they get something. It was like a six rounder or something like that. It wasn't anything crazy, but they're able to get that. So they get a little bit of something. And the Vikings, it's like, hey, it's a veteran who can go out if our rookie struggles. Like Dobbs gets to also throw to like some real weapons, too. So, I mean, I don't think it's going to save their season, but yeah.
is it going to win them enough games now? It's going to put them in that weird, like, middle-of-the-road draft mm. pick. Yeah. Winnable I division. I like that they're they're making an effort to be competitive. Don't know if it'll work out, but uh, I hope it does for Hall or, or Dobbs. We yeah. always like the underdog stories, and those guys are massive ones. I hope it works out for Aiden O'Connell right now. Sure. Um, yes, but the, a good pass rush makes your secondary better. Yeah, it really does help. If you can't get rid of the ball, then, like, you're rocking. Yeah. You're, yeah, you go, part of Commander, still your Dark Horse team. <laughs> I almost made that joke in the trade video yesterday. <laughs> yeah, still still rocking there? Yep, I'm just a year off on these things. Well, so because with the Vikings, it's a matter of can you win a Super Bowl with Kirk Cousins? And I don't know that that's been proven. And, like, he's getting older. You've already given him two contracts. I think with the the way the the way the defense is trending, you could yeah. sure. Like sure. that was the thing about Minnesota last year, right? Just like their defense is not good at all. No, 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 it was really bad. But like Kirk is getting a bit older, right? It's just, it's gonna. I also think you have to stop thinking about a quarterback only as like, can you win the Super Bowl with that guy? See, I disagree. Like, Cousins is better than, I feel like, uh, I don't know the percentage. We'll just say like 80% of your options. I see what you're talking about. Unless yeah. you have like a a guaranteed line to a better option than Kirk Cousins, it's either a, they got to be picking top three in this draft, top four in this draft, or there's got to be a guy that you can go and, and get that is, uh, I don't know, like a Matthew Stafford. Would you even say Stafford's better than Cousins at this point? An aging veteran like Tom Brady willing to about. trade teams? Like, I don't know how you're going to improve that spot over Kirk. I agree with you, but it's like, okay, so how much capital are you going to tie up in a quarterback? Well, that yeah, Kirk can... likes that guaranteed money. So that's the problem. So it's like, yeah, you could do all that, or you can get a, a franchise, like a rookie guy. I didn't say franchise. A rookie guy who you hope is your franchise player, build a great team around him, right? Because that's usually how rebuilds go. They find a guy, you have that those four to five years where you could go, okay, let's build a good supporting yeah. cast around them and we'll rock. I mean, that's what the Eagles did. The Eagles like put a lot of pressure on Hertz and we're like, all right, hopefully he goes out and plays well. And he rocked last year yeah. and helped that bring them to the Super Bowl. Not all, but it's the same thing with the Dolphins, right? You hope that Tua works out because we're going to give them the most insane offense ever. And then if he's not the guy, you know, then we rock with somebody else. Like, yeah. that's where I feel like a Kirk Cousins would do even better. And that's why all those rumors about, you know, the 49ers and how much they love Cousins and if Purdy didn't work out, because they're like, no, that's the team you could plug and play. So if Purdy's not going to be there, Cousins can run that offense. Like, you can go and he has success there. Yeah, it, like, if Cousins has an option for the 49ers, uh, he, will, he will take it, I think. I also think Kirk might finally be in that spot where he's made enough money where he doesn't have to um, handcuff the team. And the other thing we know about Cousins, besides like he's be, he's solid on the, his teammates fucking love him. Like they do. The one thing we've seen over the last couple of years is like his teammates have his back. And it's, you know, it, that's an important thing. And so it's a philosophical approach was what yeah. you just said about um, roster building. Like, can you get a, a quarterback who, is good, might be good, but you really believe that you can put a very good team around that player. Or do you get the guy you know is good and build a team that is going to be serviceable for him, that he kind of elevates some other deficiencies? It the quarterbacks like who can do that are far and few between. Very, yes. and it's, it's But difficult. it's equally as hard to build those those really good rosters around quarterbacks you're not sold on, yeah. as I can tell you. Longest winning streak in the league, by the way. So, I mean... Bam. Could make that, I'm still turning the ball over, which I yeah. hate. But Like, I Russell mean, Wilson's a very good example of... We thought he could be a guy who came in and made a, a solid roster elite. And so it went the other way. The Vikings, though, right? They have experience as a franchise building the roster in that way because they had a kick ass roster before they got Brett Favre. And even as a Packers fan, I was like, 
oh crap they're a quarterback away if they ever get a quarterback yeah. and then they just so happen to get Brett Favre and I was like crap and they were one bad interception away from going to the Super Bowl right yeah <clears throat> so it was then then they go to the NFC championship game with Case Keenum I and know. that's when they go, okay, let's bring in a guy that we think is better than Case Keenum because that's when Kirk Cousins comes in. We give him $84 million guaranteed, which was insane at the time. And you go, all right, here you go. Can he get us there? And so they have experience building the roster like that. It's just that they don't have the roster for it right now. They have some great pieces on offense, of course, like Justin Jefferson, who they're going to give a bucket load of money to, which also they need to keep into consideration. They don't really have the run game right this second, but they have Addison, who looks like he's like playing pretty damn well. Hawkinson's a good tight end. And the O-line is definitely improved. I mean, it's so improved yeah. that they're shipping out Ezra Cleveland because he's not their starter anymore. And they're like, here you go, Jacksonville, because he got beat out for his job. So the Vikings like have pieces on offense. And like you said, the defense is trending in the right direction. I think with this current roster, you need a quarterback to put you over the top. And I don't know if Kirk is that guy. But that roster can be really, really good with Kirk. It's just like they're going to have to pay him. They're going to have to pay Jefferson. They're going to, you know what I mean? It's just going to handcuff you a little bit with what you're going to be able to do and adding around. Yeah. See, but, and I think the Jags improved by getting Ezra Cleveland. True story. Uh, that, that move for me, for the Vikings, didn't make a ton of sense. I don't know everything that's going on there, but like he's been a pretty good football player. And they're they're replacing him with a man I do know in Dalton Reisner, and I hope Reisner plays well in that system. Um, but Reisner had one good season, and then he was not good for multiple years. And now we're watching a Broncos offensive line be very very good, and some guys that we thought weren't that good in yeah. Stenner Lloyd Cushenberry is just straight up balling right now. So yeah. the coaching how the guy fits within that line and the scheme of that blocking all, all factor into it. Um, yeah, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. I do want, before uh, we got to, we got to talk about underdog. Oh, I want to talk about Rasul Douglas uh, a, a little bit. Um, I'm going to, I'm here. This from Elliot. Thank you, Elliot, my friend. And this from 30. <laughs> The screaming, the crying baby in the background is what it's, really it's makes still that perfect. Clip. It's perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. All right. You want to talk about Rasul Douglas? After I talk about our friends over at Underdog <laughs> Fantasy, Dom, look, if you want to play some fantasy games, some weekly fantasy games, do it at Underdog Fantasy. We got a link in the description. Mm. Use our code GPS when you sign up. One, so they know that we are working as a sponsor. When you sign up with our code, that's how they know this channel, uh, these channels, this show is doing well. They're also going to match your first deposit up to five hundred dollars. Oh, like I told you, I got away. I got away from the uh, pickums because I believe, like I'm <laughs> zero and thirty six, zero and thirty seven on the season. I went back to drafting, doing some drafts, and I won. Meanwhile, I was successful. Yeah, you're hitting them, huh, Tom? five and it was basketball i don't even know the guy who did it i was like yeah nope. why not yo but i'm not gonna lie golf was scaring the crap out of me i only won that because the last play of the game so <laughs> yeah uh mm, mm, mm. That i what did i i played in the the battle royales this week in the drafts so they're five dollar drafts oh let me let me screen share this guy Bam. Mm, 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 the Battle Roy Owl with cheese. Boom. Battle Royale week nine. Five dollar entry. 300k in prizes. Ooh. First place gets 30 G's. Boom. Yeah. Pop me in here, guys. Pop me in here. So how this works is you're drafting against five other people, which means you can have the pick. Of the litter pretty much every time. But you're playing against the field. You're playing against everybody in the Battle Royale tournament, okay? Um, so you got to think about playing against everyone, not just who you're drafting against. And that's kind of like what I enjoy about the strategy. 
uh, because there are guys you can get later down here that people probably aren't going to take in this draft because they're not popping up in their screen. Like I said last week, I was like, I think Javante Williams is going to get a lot of carries. Boom. Uh, it happened. So there are guys down here. Maybe you're like, ooh, I, I like uh, I like Jaron Hall this week. Nobody's taking Jaron Hall. If, if Justin Jefferson was coming back, that might be a, a sneaky one. Don't know. Anyway. I switched back. I mean, I do them both, but I switched back to Battle Royale. Link in the description. Code GPS if you want to play in some fun, fun stuff. Mm. All right, Rasul Douglas. Yes, by the way. Yes. The and why question. I wanted to talk about this, Tom. All right. Ooh, I got the second overall pick. Yes. So, <laughs> like, this week, I think Saquon Barkley going to have a good game against the Raiders. At least yeah, I probably. did while Josh McDaniels was there. Maybe <laughs> Raiders play that. Our coach is fired. We're going to ball out this week game. but. Mm -hmm. Um. Mm -hmm. All right, and I felt I felt for you Packers fans because the oh. thing that became clear right away is that Packers fans love Rasul Douglas. Yeah, and I, basically the only reason I have a good read on Rasul Douglas is by doing this show with you, doing the streams with you, and seeing was it 2021 where was it a mid season trade for Douglas or did he was it he got picked up. From the oh, that's right. Practice squad. Practice and then squad. He yes. made the in, the game winning interception when AJ Green didn't turn around on Thursday Night Football against the then undefeated Cardinals. Yeah, it was it a was... P for the D moment too, and it was one of the best moments ever. Yeah, that play is insane. Um, and it was more. It was a little bit of a a luck play, but after that play, it was like. He kept making clutch plays for the Packers. So interceptions, pick yeah. sixes. Yep. It was like this was just an insanely savvy move by your front office. Yep. Who's now not savvy anymore, apparently. Which anyway, I, Packers fans love Rasul Douglas. Yes. Right. You you grew to love him. And I have seen it too many times over the last several years. You got a guy you love. Trade deadline's coming. Team's no longer competitive. Your season's a waste. They're at the end of a contract, and you just have to say goodbye. And it sucks. Emmanuel Sanders, Demarius Thomas, Von Miller. I did. Like, all of those guys. It was hard to watch him go. Yet as fans, we understood, especially with Vaughn, he's going to a better spot. He deserves to have another chance. Bradley Chubb last year. Uh, it, it's It sucks. And until the, the team is good, this shit's going to keep happening. It's going to be another guy that you love next year. Oh, yeah. You're going you're gonna to reason away why it makes sense long term. But until you find a fucking quarterback, it's not going to matter. So this is a warning to be smart, be football fan smart, be like, okay, yeah, this is the upside to it. But be prepared to be in the same place year after year after year. Unless you beat the Chiefs the week before the trade deadline, then nobody's going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> then, then everything is. Well, I do wonder, like, because the Titans won big and the Broncos won big, if they're like, we're good. Yeah. Because, like you said, you're like one game away. Off went a Betty. I did see that. It was honestly horrible. I, I saw that. Yeah, no, I, I didn't watch the video because I have no interest in seeing the video. But yeah, that the uh, NHL player who passed away. Yeah, it was. Uh... Oh, I did not see that. Oh, no, yeah, no, he took a skate to, yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's not good. And he died? Yeah, he passed away. Holy. It happened a few days ago. Yeah. That's I crazy. Really, I don't really think a clip is appropriate after that. Yeah, it's, that's not something I, we're going to play. I appreciate you, Ox, but yeah, I saw, I was at, I'm looking into, because I know there was a GoFundMe that was shared, I just wanted to verify that it's, like, actually going to the family. Um, wow. But yeah, no, that came out a few, uh, it came out a few days ago, so, yeah. No good. It's no good. Um, I have a lot to say about the Packers and Rasul Douglas. <laughs> I assumed you might. I have a lot. I'm probably gonna wind up doing a video on it. Um, yeah. See, I, I went from like kind of laughing at you guys to yeah. being like me, and now I just sympathize with you. <laughs> now I'm like, man, it's getting um, real. Is is Jordan loves? Are they thinking about? Playing a, the other quarterback, or is that just no. like some fake shit? No, it's just fake. And okay, okay, okay. 
I was like, when I you see... got enough Packers fans in the circle, you if see retweets see... of things, you're like, that can't be right. But um, I'll, I'll just what? ask Tom. Folks, so, like earmuffs. If I see one more fucking person <laughs> talk about Sean Clifford to replace Jordan Love, then you're not watching the games. You're not. You're just, you're literally not. And it's not like, oh, I could evaluate. I could see none of that shit. None of that. No. First of all, it makes no sense to bench Jordan Love because guess what? The Packers suck. They're really bad this year. Okay. You need to still figure out if Jordan Love is going to be the guy. Okay. How do you do that? You got to let him play football. Okay. One. Yes. Two. This offense is so god awful right now the offensive line sucks ass receivers are dropping balls or running wrong routes we have no run game jordan love is the leading rusher on sunday so guess what sean clifford ain't gonna fix all that that's two the other thing is and this is where it gets really really frustrating is that even if jordan love isn't the guy which guess what i don't know you don't know nobody knows even if he's not the guy they're not just going to pull him halfway through the season and be like, all right, I guess not. We're done now. They're going to play him out and see. Now, let's talk about Rasul Douglas. <laughs> I knew the Packers were not going to bring anybody in. They weren't going to trade for anyone because it made absolutely no sense. They're not really going anywhere this season. They also have no cap whatsoever. They're not really going to have cap flexibility next year either. And let's just sit down with this because this is the reality there are there's a very high chance that this season, which is already happening, and next season, the Packers are not going to be good. There is a very good chance there. In mm -hmm. 2025, they're going to have a whole lot more cap flexibility. They'll know if Jordan Love is the guy or not, right? And they can at least make decisions. This year, evaluation year. I said maybe the Packers could win 10 games. Maybe. It'd be tough. Maybe they could. Guess what? They're likely not doing that because everything sucks. And I said, okay, well, now what you need to do is evaluate. Are your coaches, are your assistant coaches, are your coordinators, are players on offense, defense, do, are they part of the future? And the scary thing is the free agents for the Packers these next two seasons, bro, like, I don't even know if you re-sign anybody. Like, let's... You know what? Let's have a talk. What you want? You That's want to talk about, you I. Want, I get it. <laughs> you want to? You want to talk about? You want to talk about what's going? On? So right now, your free agents for 2024 for the Green Bay Mother Love and Packers right now, and this all plays back to Rasul Douglas. I promise. So here, this is 2024, right? You got Yash Nyman, who apparently slapped Matt Lafleur in the face or something because they hate him. Keyshawn Nixon, who hasn't been having a great year. Darnell Savage, who just got injured too. Look at that. AJ Dillon, maybe Deguara. He's not doing look at these. Like, yeah. this is not a great list. I don't know who you resign from that. But let's go to 2025 right now. Right? Let's go here. Okay. Bakhtiari. <laughs> don't know if he's gonna be there. Nice, Anthony. Kenny Clark is gonna be 29, and I love Kenny Clark, right? So you're probably gonna have to pay him. Jordan Love, you don't know. Aaron Jones at that point, 30 years old. That's gonna be a tough sell. Eric Stokes isn't healthy, hasn't been on the field. Hopefully. Josh Myers hasn't looked good. Royce Newman hasn't looked good. TJ Slayton hasn't looked that good. And Isaiah McDuffie's not doing a whole lot. So the next two years of free agents, the Packers really don't have a ton of notable players that they're like, oh man, we need to resign. So I wouldn't be surprised if that roster, they clear it out these next two years. And 2025, they're like, hey, we're going all in. So with Rasul Douglas, right? He is a leader in that locker room. There was reports after Sunday's game that the young guys were going over to him and saying like, hey, give me advice on how to get better. Let's figure this out. He is one of the most vocal players on that defense. He's gone from a practice squad guy to getting a big contract, which is an amazing story for him. And again, he's probably playing the best right now because guys even like Jair Alexander aren't playing well. Yeah. You know, he has a back injury, but he's not even playing the best. So it was surprising because as a fan, you're like, damn, dude, like he's a great locker room guy. Yeah. He's a great talent on that defense. He's getting older and he's going to be a big cap hit next year, but it still sucks. Yeah. So it was yeah, Perna, I hear you about like, it's likely going to happen. I don't even know who they're able to trade after this though. No, I know. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, 
as a fan, you and it's harder to do these days because the player turnover, I feel like, is is more significant. But you develop relationships with guys. Sure. And Rasul came in and established that right away with fans. Right away. Von Miller had that here. And yeah. like losing those guys suck. And you're thinking, okay, we're getting like this draft pick, frees up cap. We're going to make those moves. And eventually, if you if you trust your organization, it might work out. And this season has been a really good example of us thinking it was going to be good and then having our expectations dropped sure. below wherever C-level. hell is. It was below yeah. that. It's, gone. it's down. But now, after they moved on from Randy Gregory, Frank Clark gone, uh, we Kwan Williams was injured. Uh, he was going to come back after week eight, not coming back this season. They just stripped down and started playing yes. younger and younger players until they found guys. And right now we've got dudes on defense starting to, to show out like Jaquan McMillan at corner has been mm-hmm. good. We've got Jaleel McLaughlin undrafted guy. We're starting to find some pieces and I'm trying to not get ahead of myself, but this feels like the first season where we're, we're benefiting from finding that out. And the Packers are in the exact same situation where, yeah, you lose Rasul, uh, maybe you lose another veteran or two over the the this offseason. Bakhtiari probably gone next season, yeah. You, you you start evaluating younger players, and if you can build and lean into those guys, then it makes possibly evaluating your quarterback a little bit easier, and it helps you know what to do in that situation. And I don't even think yes. the Broncos have the guy right now at QB and Russell Wilson, but he is good enough to win games on a well-coached team. And I think we've been critical of Sean Payton, but I think he's he's coaching the team well. And you guys are about to find out if that is true with Matt LaFleur, and you're in a question mark phase with him. Well, that's the thing. Dude, we have the youngest team in the league. Our offense, there's like one receiver who's 25. Everybody's younger. You know what I mean? And you're seeing yeah. that. Talk about growing pains. You are seeing that. The thing is, can you distinguish between growing pains and these guys are not going to work out? Yeah. Because that is a very big distinction. Yeah. And then you're also looking at coaching. So, Ox, like what you're saying, by the way, Freddy, Freddy, Kitty. But what you're talking about is, here's the thing. This is now the narrative, and it's not this simple because there's nuance here. And I want to talk about the Bills for a second, too. But here, LaFleur is a good head coach when Aaron Rodgers was on the team. How do I know that? Because that comes right from Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Because in 2019, they made the NFC Championship game. They should not have been there. They basically lucked their way there against the 49ers, and they got slapped. But they drafted Jordan Love, and Aaron Rodgers literally came out and said, I then said, okay, I'm committing to this scheme now, this system that LaFleur is trying to run. Because in 2019, with all the experience that Rodgers has, he kept going back to McCarthy's old system. When they were audibling, they were going back to McCarthy plays. And so in 2020 and 2021, he really went into the floor system. Right. And guess what? He won back-to-back MVPs. And of course, that's because of Rodgers, but it's also the floor. So now the question is, okay, that's great. The floor was great with a Hall of Fame quarterback. Can yeah, he be good it's... with a Jordan Love? It's hard. Right? And <laughs> you went through this. Like, Tara, you went through this. Yeah. Like, I'm preaching to the choir. But for LaFleur, this is the time to evaluate. And right now, the Rasul Douglas trade, if it should do anything for Packers fans, it should firmly place your expectations of, let's see who deserves to stay on this roster. And that means coaching, and that means players too, because you're not, we're not making the playoffs, yeah. right? We're not going far, and that's okay. It sucks, don't get me wrong, because every single team in the offseason goes, we can win 10 games, right? Like, we can do yeah. this. Yeah. But that's not the case anymore. And that sucks. And I'm going to still watch every Packers game. I'm still going to be excited for every Packers game, for every win they get, or Jordan Love looks good, or Christian Watson makes a play. But this Rasul Douglas trade makes the Packers worse for this season, which is not the priority. And that sucks. And yeah. like, it's, it's going to take a little bit, but that's kind of the short-term future now for the Packers. It's evaluate. And so you're saying Kirk Cousins to the Packers. No, Brandon, what? Not- Is that what I just heard? Kirk Cousins to the Packers? No. 
I appreciate it. Yeah, it, it's about it's about yep. finding out if if Lafleur is a a good head coach or a great head coach. And great Q, QBs yep. make up for flaws. Aaron Rodgers did. My last question for you about this: How much do you blame Aaron Rodgers for this situation versus Goody? In that, like. Rodgers is gone, right? <laughs> we know he's gone. <laughs> and we know Rodgers didn't love the front office. We also know Rodgers is indeed a complicated fellow. All right? Yes, yes. We also know players love Aaron Rodgers. Very true. Very. And true. he got to a point where I think Aaron Rodgers only wanted to come back to Green Bay if – they paid him out the ass. He's like, you're not going to trade me. Then you got to pay me out the ass. Which they did. And they did. And his contract was complicated on top of that. It was not team friendly. Like, and, that was and, like the yeah. whole story, but it was not. So in part of what like Rogers uncertainty about his future, part of that contract is a, a reason Devonte Adams is indeed gone. So like you, and I think a lot of people don't, blame Rodgers at all for any of that would that be fair or are you like ah if maybe he was a little easier to work with or i wish our front office was just more in tune with what Rodgers wanted and was on top of a little forward thinking and in, in keeping him happy and we wouldn't be in this situation whatever i say is not going to sound good and i don't mean <laughs> you're Devontae it. adams right now <laughs> like this the reason we're in this situation right now is a mixture of two things. It's the front office. And I'm also, and, and, um, and it's tragic, tragic injury and timing. Mm. So when Goody, after the 2019 season, where they lucked their way to the NFC championship game in which, by the way, yep, we saw Heineke also starting in an ATL. Tay Tay. When they went to the NFC Championship game in 2019, Rodgers did not look that great. Especially, I, I'll never forget. There was that wet, last week against the Lions. He was like overthrowing ball. I think it was to Alan Lazard on the left side. Like he missed a, and that was just becoming more frequent. Was he still a good QB? Absolutely. But he wasn't like that greatness. It was like, oh, right. maybe they're starting to be a decline. So Goody bet against Aaron Rodgers. Because they drafted Jordan Love. That yeah. whole 2020 draft, they drafted a new running back. They drafted a new tight end. Like, they built that for the future after they went to the NFC Championship game. And a lot of people, like, my reaction for Jordan Love, that thing that went viral, wasn't because I hated Jordan Love. It was because I was like, why are we picking yeah, a quarterback when we just went to, we lucked ourselves to the NFC Championship game, build for the team right now. And Goody made a decision not to. And it was that whole, you, the last time, you like the worst time to look for a quarterback is when you need one, right? Valid. But then Rodgers said, bet, and won back-to-back -back MVPs. Yeah. And so it put the front office in a situation where they're like, okay, well, now what do we do? Are we going to trade away the reigning MVP for Jordan Love, who, like, no one had a lot of faith in, especially that second year? All the reports about Jordan Love were abysmal. They were bad and so jordan Gillove gets a little better they say no we're not going to trade him to denver we're not going to do any of this stuff we're going to keep him we're going to give him a huge contract and then that year Devonte leaves which again is also for the front office as well like right. because then this just comes right from mark murphy like this is all on air like this is the interview that i did with him they Devonte wanted a deal done in august before the season started and this was like the 21 season where they almost went to the Super Bowl again, but they lost the divisional round uh, to the 49ers. They were the best team in the NFC. Then Devontae was like, okay, we're going to do a new contract. And they're like, nah, you're going to kind of wait. And we're going to see what we're going to do with Aaron first. If they win a Super Bowl, I think Aaron and Devontae are gone. But they don't. They freaking lose to the 49ers in the divisional round. It's heartbreaking. Then Devontae goes, well, no, like it's too late now. And that's when the Packers, like, originally, they're like, here's an offer. They didn't like it. But it's like, hey, like, let's try to do this again. And Devontae's like, no, I want to go play with my friend. My grandma's never seen a game. And, like, there was a little bit of disrespect there. 
and it didn't get done when Devontae wanted to, which is right. his priority. He can make that decision. They eventually wind up trading him after franchise tagging him. So those issues are the front office. And then you have Rodgers in the 2022 season where the whole team is not good. They had that little stretch, but they weren't good. They get beat by the Lions week 18. So it is the front office. It's just that they took a gamble on Jordan Love. Yeah. And they did that gamble against Rodgers and it didn't play out. But the tragic injury, and I will stand by this forever, is David Bakhtiari. If David Bakhtiari doesn't have a freak injury on New Year's Eve, the Packers win at least one of those Super Bowls. I will die on that hill because they that was the reason they lost against the Buccaneers. That's the reason that they lost against the San Francisco 49ers. And that you can't anticipate that. Right. And so that hurt them. And now we're at where we're at. So it's sense. a mixture of all those things. But I think you could look at the front office and say, like, no, like they they're the it reason was... we're here. But if they won two Super Bowls, Perna, or one of those Super Bowls, no one cares. Yeah. Oh, no one cares. Course. But they didn't. And so now everybody cares. It's and it was because I think the Packers could have drafted Jordan Love had they just talked to Aaron Rodgers about maybe that they were thinking about that um prior because he was surprised by it and when you're a quarterback and you're you you feel like your team is close and the team goes out and drafts a guy who cannot help the team right now because he's going to be playing behind you it feels like a slap in the face but if the Packers were like look Aaron we were smart when we drafted you we had yeah. far we drafted you we think we've got another guy out there in Jordan Love we want to bring in we want you here too we want you to teach this guy because you're getting older. Like, can we just talk about what that might look like? If they had like an open discussion with him about that, even if he was ultimately like, no, we shouldn't do that. Just get me a receiver and we'll win a Super Bowl or whatever the fuck it was going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, it would have been a different situation. And that's what he was underneath all of it. That's what he was really upset about. Right. Was the lack of communication to him about decisions. And, uh, you know, now they are where they are. So I think it's that, but to go full circle now, the Packers are rebuilding. This year is not going to go well, it, but if it, they evaluate and, and Jordan loves the guy, then it goes well. Then, then you're like, okay, we're, we're rocking. But the Bills, who have uh, a pretty good track record of getting some defensive backs from the Packers, looking at you, Micah Hyde, and it working out, you got like the best player possible for your secondary. Your secondary's beat up. He's a ball hawk. He's an incredible leader. And like, he will do so well in Buffalo. Like, I'm sure of it. Like, he is going to oh, yeah. be that guy, whether it's just for locker room confidence, whether it's just for like training younger guys, or whether it's actually like producing on the field and getting some turnovers. The Bills defense, which has been riddled with injuries, Trey White's gone, Matt Milano's gone. Rasul Douglas is not going to be able to like mask all of that, but he's going to help. Yeah. And so, yeah, no, you, you got a good one, Buffalo. You got like a really, really good player. It should help. Buffalo needed it. They've been, they had eight picks before Trey White got hurt and they've had like zero since. So one thing Rasul Douglas should help out is with some of those picks. Yeah. One million percent. One million percent. Sorry. We ranted for a while. <laughs> we ran long. It was a big day though. Like, yeah. For it, the rundown, was. I was just going to put, we got too much to talk about. <laughs> it's just too much. But yeah, trade deadline. I mean, I think the 49ers got better. The Bears are playing for the future. Commanders are kind of like, all right, we're going to look a little bit different yeah. now. Um, and I think Donovan People Jones going to the Lions, Detroit, a sneaky good move. Sneaky good move. Back to Michigan. Back to Michigan. JMO hasn't been great since his return. Uh, they got like a, just a, a really solid, solid receiver who's being underutilized in Cleveland. So I like that move for Detroit. It's not like, oh, this makes them an instant Super Bowl sure. winner, but it's like this could help their offense in some tough situations. Yeah. So I agree. Love it. Parna, what do you got coming out today, buddy? Power rankings. And if I can get to it, a Josh McDaniels video. There you go. If not, McDaniels will be up tomorrow. But we're going to grind. We're going to grind. What do you got, Tom? What do you got, Tom? I already got my Josh McDaniels video up. <laughs> what is what I am? It was what I am. So I respect it so much. I don't know. Now they can rock. Yeah. Um, 
so yeah, I'll have predictions coming out today. AFC North reaction to week eight coming out. Um, and if I can, uh, I'm probably gonna do members Q and A because I didn't get a chance to do it for October. I didn't get a chance to do it last night, so I'm probably gonna do it tonight. Um, I'm, I'm doing attempt. mine tonight too because I'm a I'm a daylight. Yeah, I'm a daylight, so I'm gonna have to do two in November. That's just how that's gonna go. Been but, there, done yeah. that. Uh, that's that's the tentative game plan for night now. So it's gonna be a busy day, busy day. So. Folks, we appreciate you rocking with us. We had a bunch of people in here today. A big shout out to Brandon Perna for fitting 500,000 subscribers. Rocking, rolling, crushing it. One of the hardest working people I know. Except Very for yourself. Well deserved. I'm number two to Tom, and that's I okay. don't know myself. That's what Coach is for, which you'll be watching. Anyway, folks. You're going to be watching Coach. I make it, so. You're going to be <laughs> making the whatever video. Every fan reacts to that's good sports. There you go. Folks, thank you so much for watching. I'm Tom Grassi. That's Brandon Perna. This is GPS. And you have been navigated. Oh, yeah. Uh, destination, you reached it. Got my Jay Perna back on. Jets.